Carrying on from our lesson about storage, we're now going to look at memory. Our learning objective is to understand the purpose of primary memory. So let's talk about primary memory and secondary storage first. Primary memory is a component or our components on the computer which store data that the CPU needs to access directly. Um, it holds volatile memory, meaning if the power is turned off, all the data that's stored on it is lost. Um, some examples of it are RAM, ROM, cache, and the registers on the computer. Secondary storage is used to store data that is not being used to run the computer. Um, it's referred to as non-volatile memory, which means when you turn the power off, the data on that component remains and stays. Um, you'd use it to store any documents or files that you don't need to use all the time. Um, examples of secondary storage would be a hard disk drive, a solid state drive, a CDs, SD cards, or maybe even a floppy disk. RAM and ROM are going to be the two components we're focusing on today. RAM, which stands for Random Access Memory, is a memory component which holds data that the CPU needs to process. Um, it's usually data that involves running the computer or softwares on the computer. Um, it stores volatile data, which again means when you turn the power off, all the data that's stored on it is lost. ROM, which stands for read-only memory, is a small component which stores um, some non-volatile data. Um, it's read-only, meaning you can't really edit it. And it contains something called the BIOS, which is a small bit of software which tells the computer how to turn on. Here is an image of RAM. And this is what a ROM chip looks like. Now, thinking back to how the CPU fetches and processes data, the CPU first requests data from the cache. If it's not in the cache, it will then go and check it at the RAM. Um, if it's at the RAM, it will copy it back to the cache and then send it back to the CPU and have that data processed. Now, there are some issues that might occur if both cache and RAM are full. When the RAM is full, something called virtual memory might be created. Um, it's usually created on your secondary storage device. It basically means that, you know, there's a bit of extra temporary RAM on the storage device, which means your computer will still run. Um, it might run pretty slow, but it's better than crashing out and not working at all.